Hello and welcome to Japanese Craft Beer Reviews, or welcome back, uh, as the case may be. And uh, today we're going to look at a book, not a beer. Um, film critic Roger Ebert once wrote that uh, next to watching, the next best thing to watching movies was uh, reading about them. And I don't know if that's true for beer, necessarily, uh, if there is an expect thing to uh, drinking them, but in any case, uh, I have a whole series of uh, beer book reviews. Uh, you can look at uh, the playlist I have for them. I think I've done six so far. I believe this will be number seven. And it's this book. It's called The Brewer's Tale, uh, A History of the World According to Beer interesting idea. Uh, it's by uh, a man named William Bostwick, and uh, let me just read the blurb on the back before I get into it. The Brewer's Tale is a beer-filled journey into the past. Part travelogue, part history, part culinary adventure, it tells the story of brewers gone by and a writer's quest to bring them back to life, one taste at a time. A sticky English porter, a pricelessly rare Belgian, and a shamanic wormwood-tinged grit each offer humble communion as beer critic William Bostwick uncovers stories and recipes from the dawn of civilization to the heady present. Okay, uh, that really kind of does sum it up. Maybe I could stop here, but I'm not going to. Uh, this is published in 2014, uh, and I just got a copy of it this year. Uh, and Bostwick is a uh, a uh, beer critic for the Wall Street Journal, and he's also uh, written a book on home brewing. Uh, he's he's, uh, he's uh, written articles for GQ and Bon Appetit, and uh, uh, the book contains eight chapters, and each one each one kind of. Uh, posits a person, a person as uh, a kind of social role for the time in history. So we start with the, for example, the Babylonian, uh, and then we move along to the end, to which is the advertiser, kind of showing where beer has gone from, you know, uh, a few thousand years back to now, and. <clears throat> So each person is posited kind of as a representative of the time, and and he looks at how each time period kind of approached beer making, uh, as opposed to say wine making uh, or distilled spirits, um, and he visits a number of the top brewers uh, in 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 the world. He talks to Jim Coke, uh, Boston Brewing, and some Caligione of uh, uh, Dogfish Head. Uh, he goes. He visits breweries. He goes to Sierra Nevada, Rogue, uh, Allagash, and uh, in each place, you know, we get lots of insights into different, uh, different uh, bre beers and brewing processes. And for me, the most interesting, and maybe the least interesting for uh, a lot of people, is that he attempts to make a homebrewed beer. Uh, in the style or in the fashion that they would have made at that time, um, using ingredients that would have been available and technology, generally technology at that time and place in history. So, shall we look at each one in turn? He first looks at uh, the Babylonian and he's uh, looking at the uh, ingredients to use uh, his beer that he makes during that for that time period is uh, made with dates, grain cakes, honey, coriander, and black pepper. Uh, and, uh, kind of imagining what might have been. Uh, he does make the requisite reference to Ninkashi, the Sumerian goddess of beer, uh, and and quotes some from the uh, the famous uh, poem. Uh, him to Ninkasi. Uh, uh, you, you may be new for you, but uh, I've seen it in a lot of books, of course, before. And he also compares uh, what he makes to, uh, uh, and discusses things with uh, Caligione at uh, Dogfish Head of uh, 
Midas Touch, uh, the beer that Caligioni tried to recreate from you know, scraping out from an amphora that they found in an ancient tomb. Um, the next one, the next chapter is called The Shaman, and uh, what he's looking at is the kind of edges of the Roman Empire, uh, the Nordic cultures, the Celtic cultures that kind of existed at the edge of the civilizing uh, Roman Empire, uh, and where beer kind of was taking on a sort of spiritual function for people. Um, and he makes a point that, of course, the Roman Empire <clears throat> uh, uh, tried to push, I mean, and existed on wine, uh, grapes and wine, uh, where these uh, kind of, uh, these the sort of rabble on the edge of their, their civilization uh, drank something different, uh, beer, ale, oil. And uh, so, uh, in general, the, the beer was being used as kind of an aid to enlightenment, uh, as a spiritual process, perhaps. Um, and he makes a beer uh, which is made of peat, smoked grains, rosemary, pine, lingonberries, honey, and cranberries. And basically the idea is, again, use at what you have, what's at hand. Um, beer... Uh, requires you know some extra steps. Grape wine basically will make itself uh, you know with grapes. Uh, the, the sugars are already contained inside and it will ferment itself. Uh, beer requires uh, an extra kind of inoculation to to exist. Uh, the next one is uh, the third chapter is the monk and in this case he's looking at Abbey beer in Europe and here's where we're the uh, and this is after the fall of the Roman civilization, uh, where the pagan world and the Christian world are kind of mixing and mingling. And, of course, the church, the, the Catholic church, is using wine as their beverage and the pagans beer. And monks started making beer, and the idea is, in, in many religions, to try to attract followers is to incorporate part of their 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 uh, features into your own uh, practices and so the church making beer so monks making beer instead of making wine and uh, the beer of that time is basically what's called gruit uh, using all kinds of spices and uh, before hops were used a lot in beer as preservatives um, <clears throat> And he makes a very simple one with brown sugar and raisins. And uh, in each case, he talks about how the results turned out. And I think this one didn't turn out quite so well. But in them, chapter four is the farmer. And here he looks at the saison style. He goes to visit uh, Rogue and Allagash and Jolly Pumpkin. And uh, he makes a homebrew lambic. Um, where the, he basically puts his wort and hops outside for a night and then adds some fresh wort and then puts it in a wood barrel for a year and a half and, and tries it out. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can see how the beer styles are kind of developing, uh, you know, from uh, fairly primitive to a little bit more sophisticated. But again, with Saison, Lambics, you're, with Lambics, you're basically leaving it outside and letting whatever happens to fly by and inoculate uh, the beer with the, uh, uh, with the yeast. And, and, you know, in a lot of cases, I think we have, uh, you know, in Belgium, for example, uh, they have areas where the, you know, the yeast is absolutely wonderful for it. Uh, other people do this to guard in Oregon. You know, he, the brewer there apparently went up and down the coast of Oregon collecting yeast to see what would work well in his beers. Uh, part five, uh, chapter five is the industrialist, and here he's looking at primarily British, uh, the development of the beer industry, not just small, you know, small brewing, but industry, industrial brewing of porters uh, in in England, uh, porter, uh, dark, heavy, thick beer, and then moving to pale ale, 
uh, and IPAs in the 1800s to, uh, you know, kind of what seems to be a more refined beer. Um, and, and in fact, the pale ale uh, you know, from the 1800s and then in around 1820 going to India with IPAs. And he makes a pale ale with the marisader and uh, oak chips. In part six, we get the Patriot, and here he moves to uh, the U.S. Uh, to uh, colonial period, the colonial period in in uh, uh, in beer in early America, um, where again people were using what they had at hand, and what they had at hand were things like corn, uh, pumpkins, you know, pumpkins growing like mad everywhere, uh, molasses, and the the uh, uh, during the colonial period, you know, if there was a boycott of British beer, they couldn't drink it, uh, or if Brits wouldn't send their stuff, you know, later on after independence, you know, they had to make what they, what they, with what they had at hand. Uh, so, those were some of the indigenous ingredients that they could use. He makes a persimmon beer, uh, and doesn't describe it very much, unfortunately. It's just one paragraph, so we don't really get an idea of how it was. Uh, so again, using what what you have at hand to make a beer. In part seven, the immigrant, uh, we get Germans in the U.S. Germans who are you know Im immigrating to the U.S. in mass in uh, the middle of the uh, uh, 18th century, and uh, I'm sorry, 19th century, and and uh, the rise of the pale lager. Um, and pills, uh, and this is uh, uh, industrial beer that gradually, gradually became produced with corn added to it. Um, and uh, he interviews Jim Coke and has a beer with Jim Coke, and Jim Coke says Budweiser is the best beer, the best industrial beer. And you know, a lot of people wouldn't argue with that really. Um, uh, you know, as much as we like to diss AB InBev and, and, and the uh, bean counters behind the desks there. Uh, uh, you know, they do make a marvelously consistent brew. Um, and so the rise of companies like Pabst, Schlitz, Miller, uh, Bush, and uh, the development of what's called the crown cap to, uh, to uh, put onto the beer. Uh, which really revolutionized the production of beers instead of putting corks in. And he makes nothing, no beer this time. Uh, the, final, the final section is called the Advertiser, and this is really the growth of the industry uh, and after Prohibition. Uh, from Prohibition to after Prohibition, there, we went from uh, 1,345 breweries to 31. So when prohibition was lifted, and <clears throat> five companies had a third of the market, you know, at that point, um, and now even even now we get, uh, you know, AB InBev uh, makes uh, half of the beer sold or makes or sells half of the beer that's drunk in the United States. You know, it's ridiculous. Um, and the main theme here is uh, the development of promotion and advertisement in in beer. And basically the idea is, what does the public want? What do people want? And, and let's find out and let's give it to them or let's show them what they want. <laughs> um, and he discusses uh, the development of home brewing in the U.S. later uh, in 1978 when Jimmy Carter uh, signed into law uh, uh, home brewing, legalizing, and which allowed the craft beer industry to, to take off. So, home brewers becoming professional brewers. Um, he ends the book with a tour of Miller, uh, Miller Brewing Company, and he's writing a postcard to a friend, and he says, do you know what time it is? And of course, anybody who grew up during that time I had it drummed into their heads by advertisements, it's Miller time. So. Uh, so, so many of us who grew up with all, you know, the promotion of advertising, the promotion of beer, uh, those things, you know, what was, the, what was the other one? It's less filling, you know, uh, so all these crazy advertisements uh, that they made. 
Um, Boswick is a very good writer. Uh, sometimes at the beginning I was kind of thinking he's writing so many sentences that are screaming, look at me, look at me. You know, uh, every sentence has a different kind of style, or a different kind of jumpiness to it, and I got a little tired. But then after a few chapters, it, it was okay. I think uh, uh, it wasn't a distraction later. Um, it very, very informative. Uh, you will probably know some of what is in the book, but uh, for the most part, it's very, very fresh and very, very new. Um, and I highly recommend this book, actually. Uh, uh, again, called The Brewer's Tale, A History of the World According to Beer. Um, you know, I, I don't know, at certain points you think, well, I know, I know as much as I can, and, uh, and, but this book will show you a lot more, I think, that you did not know. And, uh, I highly recommend it. So, I'll put a link, uh, the information is in the description, you can order it, uh, wherever you like. Again, The World According to Beer by William Boswick. Thank you very much, and uh, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, look at the playlist. I've reviewed several other beers, uh, beer books, and you can check those out as well. Bye-bye.